In this episode, we explore the crucial role of project management training in succeeding as a business, even in ever-changing and unpredictable markets. Hello and welcome back to the Project Management Podcast at pm-podcast.com. This is the live stream for episode 492 and I'm Cornelius Fichtner. Thank you so much for joining us. As always, for those of you who are accessing this episode recorded on your device using a podcast app, uh, please do remember this is a video episode. So if your podcast app is only giving you audio, then and look for the play video episode link or go to pm-podcast.com slash 492 to play this episode with video. So in today's rapidly evolving business landscape, really staying ahead of the curve is more crucial than ever. That's why we are going to show you the importance of understanding and adapting to market dynamics and how project management training can equip your business or your PMO with the essential skills and knowledge that is required to navigate these changes. We'll also delve into practical strategies that can help future-proof your business by promoting a culture of continuous learning and innovation. And if you want to go deeper into this topic, please visit pm-podcast.com slash navigate change. That's navigate change, one word, where I have a series of articles for you on these topics and more about these articles later on. Right now, I have invited my colleague, Jonathan Hebert, to explore these topics and provide some actionable advice to you and how to drive towards that future of innovation and success. And here he is joining us from Fullerton, California, Orange County. Hi, Jonathan. Welcome to the program. Welcome back to the program. Thank you, Cornelius, for inviting me this morning. Yeah, of course. Uh, right. For those of you who don't know Jonathan or don't remember him, because he has been on the program before, we talked about his PMI ACP experience. Here he is. Jonathan began his career as a medicinal chemist, and today he holds the position of director of sales here at OSP International where we both work. So full disclosure, we are colleagues working for the same company. Over the years, Jonathan has taken on multiple project management roles with expertise in areas including PMP exam prep, pharmaceuticals, med medical devices, and also chem informatics. For us here as OSP, Jonathan's responsibilities, they encompass directing the B2B, the corporate sales strategies, nurturing client relationships, and also collaborating across departments to achieve strategic business goals. And prior to his current role, he was in fact the senior project management for our PMP and ACP exam training and development programs. And that underlines his understanding and commitment of what excellence in this professional development space really does. Jonathan, uh, my question, my first question for you, always the same. What can our audience expect to hear from us today, to learn from our conversation? Well, Cornelius, hopefully our audience will learn a little about market dynamics, which are the forces that are affect pro producers and consumers, and they're influenced by a variety of factors, and some of which we'll be discussing today. I don't want to give it away early. Um, <laughs> the, yeah, uh, no spoiler alerts. <laughs> yeah. And also, th that the business environment has been massively impacted by things, for instance, like COVID and the rise of artificial intelligence. and it, they're, it's combined to force rapid changes in the competitive landscape. Um, this puts a, an emphasis on businesses being ready and adaptable to respond to these, what are tectonic shifts in the marketplace. All right, thank you very much for this quick intro here. Um, as always, if you are joining us live by uh, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, and you do have a question, then please don't call us. 
Hi, there is a telephone on the screen. Don't call us. Instead, use the chat functionality and we will answer your question live here on the program. So let us get started. We want to start with those shifting market dynamics that you have just mentioned, Jonathan. How have you seen market dynamics impacting businesses in recent times. What's your experience here for that? In recent times, th there's been a huge change in business environments in many industries. Um, that and technological advancements have significantly impacted companies and it's ne necessitated uh, adaptive responses to maintain a company's competitive edge, probably more than ever. Um, the rapid pace of change in industries makes it imperative. I know that's a strong word, but it does make it imperative to be agile in responses in order to manage the change that's going on effectively. Okay, and what are some of the, the maybe common challenges that we are seeing in this? Uh, I don't know if we can even say this, are there common challenges that businesses face in adapting to these changing environments? Oh, absolutely. Um, okay. Knowledge and skill gaps, you know, comes to mind immediately. Um, the natural um, tendency for some people to be resistant to change, that's uh, obviously a challenge. Um, in a rapidly changing environment, uh, there tends to be ineffective um, change control and risk management. And the importance of communication within teams, within virtual teams, and with stakeholders becomes very magnified. Um, so those are some of the challenges that uh, businesses face to adapt to a really uh, quickly changing uh, landscape. And, and why is that important? Why is it important for businesses to understand these market dynamics and, and, and uh, uh, adapt to them? Um, it's important because in in all of that change, there's new opportunities that are presented. And if a business wants to capitalize on those um, opportunities, they'll be not only ready, but adaptable to those changes. And the more effective you are at um, adapting to market dynamics, it ensures that your business stays aligned with business goals and market conditions. Okay. Thank you. So we've, we've kind of discussed and, and laid the foundation, I hope, for the shifting market dynamics so that we're all on the same page. That's what it's really all about. The next question that I have, because our, our discussion here is about the role that project management training plays in all of this. Yeah, how, how does that work, right? How does project management training help businesses navigate these market changes? Well, uh, I think project management training equips teams uh, with essential skills, as I mentioned, um, you know, the skills gap. And it also equips teams to effectively manage risk and change. Um, stakeholder communication um, is enhanced and it enables teams to assess and respond to those market changes and again capitalize on the opportunities that they present mm -hmm. okay we'll, we'll be looking at at the skills these essential skills that you mentioned in in just a moment but before we move over there right and maybe yeah let, let's maybe preview quickly what are some key skills that are being developed here uh, from within project management training yeah uh, effective uh, stakeholder communication, risk and change management, uh, critical thinking and decision making, especially on the fly and effective team management skills, uh, such as servant leadership in agile project management. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I think it, as a project manager, if you don't have a, a, a you know, if you naturally don't have these, I mean, it, it's almost a bad move for you to move into project management. You need to have some basic skills around what you have just mentioned, right? Right, and uh, you also have to have, a, I think project management gives teams a culture of innovation and adaptability, especially um, agile project management. Um, yeah. And it enables teams to then integrate tools because there's been a lot of um, technological changes recently and stay abreast of those uh, advance, advancements as well. Mm -hmm. 
so we're talking about project management training helping businesses, but mm -hmm. the training itself goes to your employees. It goes to the people managing the project. So how then does project management training help build resilient and, and prepared organizations? How does that work? How does that translate? How does that sort of trickle down or trickle up? Yeah, the training bolsters uh, an organization's capacity um, to manage change effectively, make swift and effective decisions, communicate changes to stakeholders and within teams, and that that will ensure minimal disruptions in the business environment. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so from the role of PM training, let us move on to those essential skills that you have mentioned. Uh, you already talked about these essential skills too, but are there any particular ones that are essential for navigating these market changes? that we talked about? Uh, yes, there, um, as I mentioned, there's servant leadership. There is innovation and adaptability that project management um, supports and, and emphasizes. Um, uh, you know, the, you, you have to be ready and you have to be adaptable. Uh, it's kind of a common theme that will come up. Okay. And, yeah, and common... speaking, yeah, go ahead. Um, project management also um, gives you a common language and structure to be able to operate effectively across your business and much more now in virtual teams. Yeah, and I think this is something that has been known for years already, this common language, right? We're also seeing this with companies coming to us and saying, yeah, we are engineers, but we want our engineers to be trained in project management so that we have the same foundational language when we work together with our customers and we implement engineering projects at their end so that they understand us and we understand ourselves in, internally, right? Is that, exactly. Is that part of it? That, that's okay. absolutely a perfect example. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And how does this stakeholder communication that we've developed through project management training, how, how, how does that contribute to my business's ability to navigate these market changes? How, how does that then work? Well, you alluded to it in, in that everybody has this common language regarding project objectives, stakeholder benefits, um, the project progress, where are we in the project, and potential challenges. So that those kind of skills, again, emphasize and make it possible to make swift and effective decisions in a marketplace that is rapidly changing. Uh -huh. Would you also say that repeatability is part of that because we're all following the same process and, and we're doing things the same way across multiple customers? Yes, I, exactly. We're not um, speaking a different language. We're going through the same processes and um, uh, dealing with the same outputs and documents um, so that we can all understand each other better. Yes, yeah, so mm -hmm. it's very repeatable and um, project management training is then the same for each of these different entities. And, and when we say project management training, we don't mean we're teaching you agile, scrum, or we're teaching you waterfall. We're, we're just talking project management training as a generic term, right? Yes. It, it, and I'm using air quotes here, it doesn't matter whether it's a, a waterfall type approach or an agile type of approach that you're being taught as long as everybody is on the same page. That's correct. That's correct. Yeah. Uh, I, I think um, agile is obviously um, front and center now because we're having to adapt. We're having to um, expect change in our projects. So mm -hmm. I agree with you. It, you know, whether it's waterfall or agile, um, you need the training and that foundational um, skills and languages that that provides. Yeah. 
I think, if I remember correctly, you did mention change management earlier on. And, and just as a, as a reminder, everybody, we're still talking about essential skills here uh, that project management training will provide you. So if one of those essential skills is change management that you get through project management training, why is that, whoops, did not want to move on yet or move back here rather, there, there we are. <laughs> uh, why is that vital? for businesses in, in our current market scenario? Uh, change management um, is, is part and parcel, you know, in um, project management training. It, it allows you the skills um, and the tools and the techniques to manage change effectively in your, your organization. Um, again, so your business goals and um, other goals stay aligned and evolve. Right. I could also see that it could help you uh, in business operations as well, because if you know how to manage change well, it, it may help minimize disruptions um, with all of these changes, because you have the ability to understand where you are today. You apply your change management skills to move to a better place, to a future state. Would that, would that also work? Yes, absolutely. And businesses that anticipate that change um, do very well. Pfizer, for instance, the company I worked for um, yeah. in 2002, we, we were just about to go on a big acquisition spree. And what the management did is they instituted project management training and they gave everybody a, a probably a famous book uh, called who moved my cheese um, to help them with their change management uh, skills and also um, the acceptability of change. Uh, okay. And uh, the obvious question, did it work? Absolutely. Yeah, it, it worked great. Um, we had most of our team do that training and the, the people that were change resistant, they could see, you know, the wave coming and the book and the courses help them in their own ability to manage that change and take mm -hmm. advantage of the opportunities that it presented. Not scary, actually exciting. So allow me to follow up on that and flip this on its head because so far we've talked about, you know, teaching your employees, bringing them project management training. How was that for you personally to go through this and see this? You said exciting? Yes, it was exciting because it exposed all of the possibilities uh, of this change. Um, and it gave me a lot of tools, uh, a change really in mindset and thinking. And um, it, it enabled us to incorporate the, in the processes and information of other businesses in a way that was structured and effective. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I saw that and my colleagues um, also grew in that regard when i look back to the bio that we we have you started as a, as a medicinal chemist and you're now in project management was that kind of the turning point for you where you got into project management or was that earlier or later uh, uh actually i left the r d uh, function and started more uh working on business analysis because having the discipline and the the um academic preparation i could understand the customers very well and business analysis um was a great jumping off point before i jumped into project management and started managing um, informatics projects uh, for the company okay got it and th this is a perfect segue because we want to talk about upskilling because that's what you went through during that change over there so why is upskilling and continuous learning crucial for businesses in today's business environment because it fills those gaps, those skills gaps and the knowledge gaps. It approves of efficiency in, in how you um, manage your resources and allocate them. It creates kind of a mindset of forward thinking and a proactive workplace that embraces uh, future changes and trends. And 
it, it, again, a project management training fosters improved stakeholder and team communication. They're essential uh, for periods of rapid change, like today, for instance. Yeah. And, and when you look back to what happened at Pfizer, was this maybe also the beginning of, shall we call this a culture of continuous learning and innovation there for the people who went through that training? Was that kind of part of the idea of why they did that? Absolutely. That's a really good um, example, actually. Continuous learning and innovation. It um, Project management instills that in uh, employees and workforces. Um, it It's foundational, advanced training. It gives opportunities for members to stay connected and current industry trends and adopt uh, digital tools like JIRA, for instance, Slack, um, MS Teams, especially those last two because they enhance the ability of a project manager to communicate with their oftentimes remote teams. Mm -hmm. So businesses that reward and promote the application of new skills in a real world environment are much better equipped to adapt to those changes in a marketplace that's highly dynamic. So. We've mentioned this previously, so to, you know, to close out upskilling here, um, you have the same language, you kind of have the same approach that you know, but um, are there any other reasons why all of this upskilling is helpful and, and how it contributes to better outcomes and, and business success? Is there anything more than those two things that, that we talked about twice already, I think? <laughs> well, it, effectively leveraging digital tools to make data-driven and data analytic um, decisions and optimize, again, optimize resource allocation is, is crucial. And I think that that's part of what upskilling will do. Uh, I think when things are changing, you really have to be um, able to inform your stakeholders quickly and accurately and project management training really emphasizes the communication aspect of projects. Mm. And I think if we're taking this over to the agile side, in agile, we are clear. We say we are capable adults, right? We're grown-ups. We mm -hmm. are self-motivated. We know how to do these things. We, we move things forward on our own. And I think by if a company goes that route and really looks at, at its employees as capable people and trains them in project management to use their abilities, their capabilities to drive forward their projects, that will enormously help your business to also move forward, right? Absolutely. A little bit yeah. of a rhetorical question that yeah. I tried on myself. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, let's move on here from upskilling. Where we're going on to future-proofing your business or your PMO because um, all this training, all this upskilling, you know, if you, have a, if you have a project management office, that's probably where you want to start. You know, get all your project managers on the same page. So what are some practical steps that businesses can take in order to assess their current skill gaps and invest in this foundational training and then obviously also moving on from foundational training and go into advanced training. How do we do this? How are we about to doing this? Yeah, I think there's various ways to assess um, current skills. This is probably a, an interview on its own, I think. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The, the, the first step, as, as you mentioned, it was assessing the skills gap, uh, evaluating, you know, the existing project management skills of your workforce that highlights these uh, areas of weakness and areas of strength. Um, therefore, it gives you the ability, that assessment, um, that skills assessment and knowledge assessment gives you the ability to fill those gaps with project management training. Um, you see uh, areas of improvement better, you develop skills that are required to effectively manage uh, projects in the context of a, a changing and emerging world. 
Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that we haven't talked about at all is certification training. Does that play into this at all, foundational advanced training? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, this, the goal of certification training like PMP is to cover essential areas of project management, give, again, that same um, uh, language to project managers, um, agile project managers, effective managements, and virtual teams. Virtual teams are becoming hugely important um, mm -hmm. in this work from home environment. Um, so managing those virtual teams and being able to fill those skills gaps are extremely important at a time like this. Yeah. Let me, let me jump on this because we've been talking about this, this environment of continuous learning and, and innovation that we as a company need to do that. How, how do I do that? How do I foster? as a company, as a PMO, such an environment? You continuously encourage, and I, I believe you do, um, learning and innovation. Invest, you've invested in all of us in our project management capabilities. Um, you have rewarded uh, this kind of this kind of uh, emphasis of you know becoming um, a continuous learner and growing in the environment. Um, so businesses have to reward, challenge, and recognize when individuals make these leaps and grow personally and professionally. Mm -hmm. So it's and, a reward and, and recognition thing that can really help you know, your team take that next step and jump out into the changing world. And of course, it has to be the right training I can't just be so what are my some maybe key considerations that i should think about when i'm choosing the appropriate project management training i would assume if we are a scrum shop we're not going to teach people waterfall <laughs> i mean that has to be a match at at the most basic level yeah. but what are some other considerations that that we need to we need to think about I think you need to look at the program, the training program, and see how comprehensive it is. Is it's it, you just mentioned? It's not you know f uh, focusing on one type of methodology. It's it's giving you an exposure to various types. So how comprehensive is my is this training program? How how much does this training program align with industry standards and those emerging trends? Um, is this something that, you know, I took off the shelf and it's 10 years old, or is it something that, you know, is of the day? Um, I think the quality of uh, uh, the training materials and the instructors is key. And when I came to the company, uh, that one of the first things that, you know, I really noticed was your focus on quality of training materials and you. your, your passion. You know, um, it is your it is your love and it comes out in the training materials, the quality of those training materials. Um, I was working on, I was working on, a, on another lesson yesterday and I was looking at this thing and I was like, this isn't right. This isn't working. And I started hyperventilating. <laughs> I, I can't, I get can't up see and that. Walk away. I, I have to step away from this. This isn't right. This isn't up to my normal standard. And yeah. Yeah. Thank I, you. I'd also, I mean, I, I also add, you know, for a project management training program, especially today, the, the um, way that you, deliver that program and how flexible it is, is very important. Um, obviously, COVID has put an emphasis on working with remote teams, as I said, um, but it also has put an emphasis on the trainers to step out of that face-to-face, -face, which is a very rich learning environment, I give you that, but they've had to pivot to virtual training and pivot to online self-paced training so that their employees aren't impacted you know and they're not sitting in a class for 40 hours in a week and nothing is being done but they can study the material they can learn project management on their own time when it makes sense for them and wherever they are so if you have a program that's that flexible i i think 
that's going to be beneficial to your employees. And that program is the same, whether it's, you know, being taught in India, um, Scandinavia, here in the United States, it, it's, um, it's that important. And of course, you also have to consider the age of your employees. I'm sort of an in-betweener. I'm between boomers and Gen Xers. I, I don't fit either perfectly. So I, I can go anywhere. I can go live training. I can go virtual training. I can do this on my own. Um, the younger generation, you know, if, if you don't give them virtual or, or you know, self-paced, that's probably the wrong thing to do. So I think a good feedback loop is required here. You yeah. need to listen to what the people you're training tell you. Absolutely. Uh, customer feedback and reviews, it, it, there's, no, um, there's no replacement for that. We mm -hmm. learn the most when um, we look at our own reviews, when we um, get in touch with those people that are making those reviews. They give us hints about how we need to change, where we are weak, and where we're effective. So if you're a customer looking for project management training, I would take a look at the reviews and um, t it's telling you what people think, not us. Mm. It's, it's our customers. And yeah. yeah. Right. And, and as, well, uh, yeah, as well as um, the support resources maybe that a program um, gives you for after the training, because training is an event, but changing the way of work which is what project management does. It changes the way of work. Is something that evolves and is continuous. All right. Thank you, Jonathan. Before we get into sort of the takeaways at the end here, I did mention that we do have a, a number of articles about this topic up on our website. So if you really want to delve deeper into this, please do stop by at pm-podcast.com slash navigate change, one word, navigate change. And uh, these articles that we have there, uh, here they are. They are, first of all, Unlocking efficiency through consistency. We talked about that. The power of a standardized project management language in your organization. Then the second one is bridging the gap. How project management training transforms business outcomes. The third is adapting to change. How project management training prepares businesses for market demands. And of course, the last one, stay ahead of the curve. Equip <laughs> your business with project management training. And you can see from these titles here, we've really thought this through and we're making it easy. Uh, and we're making it easy, I hope, for you to also now delve much deeper. And I'd like to bring up this comment here that we have from Imetan. I'm having a great time with this session. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Imetan. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Uh, we are having a great time with it as well. Um, we're now coming to the close here, and uh, at the close, we always do takeaways. This is a particular image that I've chosen. Jonathan is an avid biker. <laughs> so now, as we are all, you know, we're getting to a close here. Everybody's hopping on their bicycles and riding away <laughs> from, from our conversation here. Jonathan, what are two or three uh, takeaways for our audience here today? Um, understanding and adaptability are, are key to your ability to stay in front of, of the competitive uh, landscape. Um, upskilling, continuous learning, as you said, communicating with teams better within your teams, with stakeholders, that, that is um, a takeaway that you should hear loud and clear. Um, promoting a culture like you have at, at um, our organization of continuous learning and growth. Um, and um, embracing the change. I've seen you yourself just um, come into um, your own in artificial intelligence. It's been a huge um, focus and exciting for you. I can see that. And uh, exciting for all of us. Every time you get on a program, it seems like AI is helping 
that program. So continuous learning, fostering that, and um, you know, supporting your employees in a very challenging workplace. All right, thank you very much. I have another one, uh, another takeaway, and that is obviously talk to Jonathan if you're interested about <laughs> knowing what we do and how we can help your business to navigate all of this change. Jonathan, thank you so much for coming on the program with us today here. Much appreciated. You're welcome. And I'm about to go on my bike ride. So <laughs> <laughs> thank you. All um, right. It was a pleasure. Yeah. Okay, so uh, in closing, please do visit pm-podcast.com slash 492 for show notes, transcripts, and PDU information. Yes, you can earn PDUs for listening to or for watching this particular interview here. The PDU category is going to be business acumen, and it looks like it's going to be about half a PDU that you can claim for this. Our email address is info at pm-podcast.com. And finally, we have this. Project management training is like yoga for your businesses. It makes you flexible, balanced, and ready to bend over backward for your customers. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Jonathan. Until Thank next you, time. Cornelius.